Welcome in to the PHNX Sun Devils post game show. Sir. Let's go, Daniel. Turn me up. Yes, sir. yes, sir. I caught it. I saw it. I caught it. <laughs> I told you I was in that broadcast, man. Hey, David, can you uh can you get that off the screen real fast? Uh, w Daniel, just uh, immediate reactions. What are you feeling right now after such a huge dub? Man, I go. I, I won't. I like. I like the feeling. Of it, so we just try to keep this up. Man, everybody celebrating. Everybody like it. So we just talked about it. We just said, y'all like the feeling. Let's keep this up. Y'all know what we gotta do at practice. You know what we gotta do to try to win as much games as we can. You know it's feel good, but we still got a long season ahead of us. We gonna celebrate though. You know we gotta celebrate the dub, but. You know, we got a longer season ahead of us, so that, that's like really more important than you know than the whole than this game. So, yes, sir, I mean, you 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 got in the end zone finally. What was I mean? How does it feel to finally get your name in that in the box score like that? Nah, it felt great, you know. And I I told y'all last week or two weeks ago, I I got a purpose, so you know, I I dedicate uh, that touchdown to uh, you know one of my fallen brothers. He he passed away like a month ago, you know, a little month ago. So I just you had to throw that up for him. So I know he up there watching, happy for me. So you know, it's just a lot of emotion through that touchdown. You know, you know why I do this. You know, all the purpose in the football. So it's just all emotions just run through my body. You know, I love the feeling of it. So I, you know, I'm gonna keep trying to win as much as I can the rest of the season. Yes, sir. Daniel, this game was so back and forth, score after score. What was the vibe on the sideline like? Every time that Washington was driving, was it just a we're gonna be on the field soon? We gotta go get a touchdown right now, or? Yeah, we we knew we know what time it was. We knew the energy. We knew it was gonna be a dog fight. You know, we I practiced literally. We've been we've been practicing so so hard. You know, Coach Gone been doing a great job of that. You know, changing up the practice tempo. You know that that tempo is gonna come up in the game. You know, that two minute drill, four minute drill, all that. So, you know, we had to go execute both sides of the ball. Offense came a little short, but you know our defense. Plus step four, so you know that's just literally like most of hella high right now. I'm on that caffeine. It gave me caffeine before the game. Let's go. <laughs> <Yes, Boy. sir. laughs> um, I mean, we got to ask. Obviously, you guys lost Emery earlier on in the game, um, and then Trent Borgay stepped up. I mean, what was it like? How, how, what did you think about his performance and what he brought to the game once he got in? Ain't nothing. Everybody, that ain't nothing new. He came in. You know, prayers up for Emery. Uh, I don't know. Nobody know what happened, but, you know, prayers up to bro. But Trent came in, and nobody was worried. We we already know the deal with Trent. You know, he's cool, calm, collected. So we just all act like nothing was wrong. Like, Trent practices with us every day. We practice Emery every day. So it was nothing new. Like, we, we literally, I don't know, we didn't skip a heartbeat, I feel like. Trent came in there and didn't skip a heartbeat at all. It just got a little bit faster, I thought, so. Definitely. Daniel, last question for me. Obviously, you mentioned you get in the end zone, but you also got people $4 burritos yes, at Burrito sir. Express tomorrow. Yes, How does it man, feel I like you got that? $4, man. <laughs> Dog, I hope everybody will get them burritos. Yes, sir. Nah, nah like literally, $4. I'm trying to score every week. You know, so I get everybody on that deal. Everybody get on them burritos express. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Best I, burrito I got, in town. I got to ask when you. What's it mean to get this win for Coach Iguano? Like, obviously, it's his first win as a head coach. What was that like? What was it kind of what he's saying to y'all um, once you got in the locker room? Now, emotion, emotion was hot for everybody. You know, we've been, we've been all working. There's, there's a couple of dudes, you know, letting they, they, their tears out, all that. So, you just, I can just tell you, we've been working these three weeks hard, you know. So, you know, Coach Iguano, he was emotional, he was emotional, all that. But you just tell how much work we put in these three weeks. How like we've been putting crazy work in these last three weeks, and this is the hardest work I put in in college since I've been here. So it's just, man, it's just real good. We just trying to keep this up. Like I said, this feels good, but this is not the end of the season. We ain't winning no champions. We still two and four. You know, we got catch up on our dubs. Start the season off slow. We trying to pick it up now off this momentum we got. So that's where we are right now. Oh yeah. Well, before we get you out of here, Daniel. Just anything you want to say to the Sun Devils fans about you got your your bye week next week, but looking forward to the rest of the season. What can they expect? Just we gonna keep working. Like hopefully y'all keep working with us because we we have practice every day. We working like so. It's hopefully the fans keep supporting us. You know the fans 
through the rough times, the good times. I stay with us. Just know we love y'all. I just like literally it, the fans. The fans bring me energy. Like the more fans, the more energy I bring. The more big plays I feel like I can make. More people on the fans just turn me up so much. Like so, that's just one thing. They come in. We gonna bring more energy, more enthusiasm. So they're they're a big part of our you know for our success as well. For sure. Well, Daniel, I appreciate all you go back to yeah, celebrating. Celebrate, Thanks so man. much for calling in. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good one. Thank y'all. Too, man. Too. Later. Daniel Ngata, the legend yeah. himself, the burrito oh, mastermind. And this is the PH Next Sun Devils post game show. And for some reason, <laughs> our score predictions were on the screen from, I think that was NAU. Yeah, uh, I don't know what's going This on. is the PH Next Sun Devils post game show. Opened up a little bit differently today because Daniel was in the locker room. He called us off rip. Off rip. I was not, I, none of us were ready for it. But you know, so we, we roll with it. House clean. PH Next Level's post game show brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook app. Thank you so much to everybody for tuning in. It's time to celebrate, baby. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. David, <laughs> the one that just got those air horns ready. Can you go grab me a nice Four Peaks brew, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever's cooking? Can you get me one? Can yeah. you get me a, a desert day drinker? I haven't had one before. <laughs> well, while he's doing that obviously we'll talk about the last play of the game. We'll go reverse chronological. Should we also address the tree is at the game? Oh yeah. So we didn't fire him. Yeah. He's going to be joining us after talking yeah. to some, some, uh, to coach Iguano and stuff. So, um, uh, what, what were you, what was going through your head after not only, you know, the game looked like it was over and then there was going to be a chance that Penix was going to get a shot at a, a Mike Hale, Penix Jr. Mary. Yeah, um, I was thinking back to the Kale, or the Hale Murray um, against the Buffalo Bills, uh-huh. and I was like, "Oh God, oh God," because um, it was it just seemed like a little too good to be true. But I mean, they pulled through, and I feel like that was kind of the whole the thing of the whole game. Like they, they were they kept getting punched in the mouth, yep. and then they were throwing punches right back. Like um, it was a heavyweight fight. For it sure. was a heavyweight fight, and it, I I would <laughs> take it. I, I would take it. That's a number t- nineteen rank or twenty one twenty one rank team in the country and they went out and balled and the Mariners just took the lead going into the bottom of the ninth what are we doing here the <laughs> world is crazy <laughs> oh just just such a, a emotion-filled game you could see yeah. it from the players we were there for the first half and it just seemed like they came out on a mission even even with, with Emery playing Emery played great yeah uh, he, I mean in the way he, he got he, to do yeah he did his job I mean I think this offense would have clicked regardless who was that quarterback but that just shows you Trenton Bourget and who he is as a person. Yeah. Being able to come in after a three year bench guy, four year bench guy, because he's redshirt junior, just sitting and waiting for his time. And this was truly the moment, the Trenton Bourget moment. Trent him, Bourget. Trent him, baby. W- what did you see from him that made him succeed so much? Oh, man. I mean, he did just about everything right. He did great at identifying pressure before the snap. He had some, a lot of poise in the pocket. Like, he didn't get too worked up. Because I feel like, you know, it's easy in that situation. Starting quarterback goes down. You're finally getting an opportunity, especially a guy that's been here as long as uh, Trenton has, to get worked up and try and make plays. And he didn't. He didn't play out of his head. He he trusted the play calls, which were pretty great play calls. And he made good throws, good reads. Like, he did very little wrong. Even the one interception he threw, I didn't think was his fault. I forget that. I think it was Brian, Brian Thompson. Thompson. I think it was on that on that interception, but whoever the receiver was on yeah, that interception, like Brian he didn't Thompson. he didn't run that route yeah. correctly. I, at least I don't yeah. think it didn't look like he did. So um, he played a terrific game. He just picked up where they left off with Emory, and it was Chef's yeah. kiss. Yeah, uh, but the pocket pocket presence you mentioned it, yeah. Coach Evan being in the chat mentioning it uh, on a couple the the first touchdown to Xavier and Valade just standing in there and taking the, yeah the first touchdown standing in there and taking a hit yeah. and delivering a. What was probably a check down that ended up in a touchdown. They they sold out and yeah, he was great. But the Elijah Badger throw, the the first touchdown to Elijah Badger, where he just stayed in the pocket, didn't didn't get too rattled, and just threw a absolute dime over the top of a defender into mm-hmm. the back of the end zone. And Elijah Badger, two touchdowns tonight. He was fantastic. But you can't say enough about the kid from Tucson, Trenton yeah, Borgay, who is not a bull from Juve. Bear down. Um, yeah, I mean, like Daniel had said, like they looked even, they looked good at the beginning of the game and they looked even better once Borgay came in. Like yeah. they, they, they didn't really skip a beat at all. And that was, it was terrific. And I mean, it, Joe makes a point, like, I, I'm not sure if Emery makes a lot of those throws, like 
we don't know. But all that really matters is that Trenton did. Yeah. And he did when it mattered. He didn't again, he made one mistake yeah. and and the defense did just enough to keep them in this. Um it was terrific. That's how you're gonna beat a Washington mm-hmm. team like this. You know their offense is gonna score points. Um but you just gotta score more and Borgay yeah. did that. Obviously it's a conversation that is going to be had the quarterback controversy yes. conversation. We're not going to have it right now. We'll probably have it near the end of the show, but let's just kind of soak up this win. Yes, sir. First, starting with some four peaks beer to soak up a victory W into the tummy of Sun Devil fans. It's the best place to get your beer in Tempe or anywhere in Arizona. It's fantastic. Are you just eating dubs, eat some chicken eating dubs, tendies. and then I'm washing it down with four peaks <laughs> and Todd Graham being in the house. Yeah. I bet he, I bet what he are was we sipping doing on, here? on some four peaks. Uh, I'm sipping on some Kilt Lifter. Sean's got the day drinker. I've never had this before. You've never had but, it. But, you so. know, day game, day dub, day drinker. Love it. Love it. It's it's fantastic. Um, go get some beer wherever you get your beer in Arizona. If you're in Tempe, go stop at a Circle K or something. Grab some Kilt Lifter. Fantastic. Hold on now. <laughs> Hold on now. This if, reminds me of home. But if you're going to be drinking, you got to be 21 or over and enjoy responsibly. What does it taste like? Um, I don't – it doesn't taste – like, it tastes better than – but, like – there's a, a blue light. It's a Canadian beer, and it's just mm. a very, it's a, like a nice, nice light day drinking beer. And aptly named. Hey, now this, <laughs> Slap, schmackin'? I mean, could be schmackin'. This is the Trenton Bourget. It came in when I wasn't expecting it, and now I'm like, is it the best? It might be. <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> um, all it's right. top three though. At we least we have by the numbers ready. Yeah, uh, I did send it to, uh, well, no, I, I made it and then didn't send it to David. <laughs> yeah, I just sent it to David, right so now. it's coming in right now. Um, uh, yeah, final obviously being 45 to 38 with a chance of a comeback at the end. The game was back and forth all night. Sean, what is the biggest number that sticks out to you? Um, Honestly, it's the penalties. Like, the fact that ASU gave up, had 10 penalties for 87 yards and still won the game is wild. Um, I still don't like the secondary. I feel like it has far too many personal fouls for my liking. Um, but they, I, I, the fact that they were able to overcome that just kind of shows how a little bit of a, a gritty of a win it was. Um, and then it's funny that the third downs worked out exactly the way they did, 7 for 14, because on mm. Friday's show we talked about how it's literally a coin. Like, that's their percentage. They usually are about 50% on three on third downs. And off of the USC game, I was like, honestly, if it's a coin flip, yeah. I'll take that. And it ended up being a coin flip, and they got they did, again, the defense did just enough to win this game. Um, and it feels good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the number that sticks out to me is just the final score. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's fair. It was just, it was absolutely ridiculous. Obviously, I bet on the under tonight, and that's okay. I'm fine with losing a bet like this, but this is, this is, this a, is a Joe a in the stat, chat a saying, stat. you could have been born in turn 21 to drink four peaks since the last time UW has won at Sun Devil Stadium. For sure. It has been a while. Um, but I did bet on ASC Moneyline, and we'll take that at plus 450. I didn't you bet on the under, too? Yeah, that's why I said that first. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Sorry. I just yeah. said You're the You're just ignoring part. my first statement? I didn't hear the under. I- it's okay. Hey, it's I right. was focused on the stat. Um, Charles and the chat bringing up penalties were still an issue, but fortunately they didn't come back to haunt the Sun Devils. Yeah, it could have right at the end, but there were a lot of penalties. Five for 50 at halftime. I don't know what the final tally was, um, but just – yeah, it got a little scary. Uh, final tally for ASU, 8 for 77, uh, 2 for 10 on offense, 8 for 77 on defense. That's that's not going to win you a lot of good uh, games against good teams. No, but it did today. That's all that matters for right now. <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, if we're talking about the defense, this team's defense is not great. But their red zone defense is pretty fucking electric, yeah. especially in that one end. Uh, when you were in the sitting in the press box, the right the right end yeah. of Sun Devil Stadium, the motherfuckers make plays. Yeah, they, they make do. plays. Jordan Clark makes plays. Jordan Clark was terrific today. Um, honestly, everyone in the secondary, other than Roe Torrance, was terrific today. Um, but even uh, still, they did enough. Uh-huh. They did enough. Yeah, Charles, I will gladly sac- sacrifice the deep and lock. Yeah, for. A game like this. Ben in the chat bringing up what a good win for the integrity of the program. Honestly, he's not wrong. He's not (laughs) wrong. It does help this program moving forward. You saw Daniel. I mean, Daniel just is excited for the future of this team. He's It's not finished. Job's not finished at all. But this is just the start. Had a slow start to the season. We'll wake up and we'll see who plays. He's playing quarterback next week or in two weeks because they have a bye. But 
We'll only talk about the one guy, and that is tonight's player of the game who's getting bottle service tonight, Mr. Sean DePaz. I mean, I honestly don't know exactly what the graphic is, but duh. <laughs> it's Trent Borgay. It's Trent him, Borgay. Cut me off a slice of that Borgay pizza. <laughs> I think we were a little disrespectful. We said the Borgay pizza just was like cheese. I think it's got some no, like it's an everything pizza. I, I, well, nah, because no. they got uh, olives on there. Yeah. Nah. It's like if it's an everything pizza, it's like an everything pizza without the olives, mm. and then one olive just happened to be in the peppers. So you know there is an interception, but it, mm, it's not yeah. his fault. Trent it's not Borg- the pizza's fault. It's the cook's fault. Yeah, Trent Borgay, fifteen for twenty-one, one hundred eighty-two passing yards, three touchdowns. If you guys don't know what we're talking about when we're referring to Borgay pizza, uh, Jaden Daniels call back. Yeah, had a pizza here uh, before back when Borgay was our starter. When Borgay was assumed to be the starter, so we were saying let's get. Borgay a pizza, an NIL pizza deal. Um, so, guys in the chat, drop what your Borgay pizza would be. What would be on After your After that went. Borgay I mean, pizza. for me, it's my favorite pizza, which is um, sausage and onion. Oh, Huge sausage and onion guy. It's a tremendous pizza. Or chicken, grilled chicken and hot peppers. Yeah. Terrific. So, I'm helping it. And- I, I wish that, that this game, I know Andrew in the chat saying, saw some high school players at the game. What, what a one to have them out at. I wish that this game was the Utah game when they had yeah. like 100 or whatever it was. Yeah. But, um, you know, they had some, they did have some people there. Yeah. There were some, some heads. There were some guys. There um, were some guys. Coach, former ASU football head coach Todd Graham was in attendance. A weird, a surprise. <laughs> was in attendance. And Jordan Simone. And, and uh, then um, Pat Tillman's daughter. I don't know. Well, there's also Terrell Suggs. Yeah, yeah. But um, these all, they were all in the same box. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. what I'm saying. Oh. Deep dish and with sliced oh. husky. Um, oh, God. Uh, the best is buffalo chicken, Andrew says. Sausage and onion, I will ride with that. Extra garlic make yes. it stinky. Yes, let's go ransom. Uh, let's go ransom. I just put beef and intestines on it because this kid's got guts. guts. Yeah, nice. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It. A sausage. It's a sausage pizza. Yeah. It's, it's sausage intestine. guts? Yeah, I mean, it's it's... No, it's not. Like OG sausage is like intestine. Gross. I think. Well, I mentioned that sure. I bet on this game a little bit. Let me get those what those odds exactly were. I'll pull up my DraftKings Sportsbook app. But if you guys haven't downloaded it today, download it right now and use that promo code PHNX. If you do. Chris is back. Yeah. Chris is the one. Yeah. He Chris, done new. Chris is the one. He did say the first half over was a lock. Congratulations to you. That pick six was nice for it. Um, and if you do download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use that promo code PHNX tomorrow, Bet just five dollars on any NFL team to win their game, and if they do, two hundred dollars in free bets. Cha ching, cha ching! It's coming your way cha-ching, cha-ching. with the DraftKings Sportsbook app. They also got stepped up same game parlays, where you can add more legs for more value. Yeah, ransom. I'm sorry, to ruin your fan with ransom. Just... Always guts. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Download it today. Use that promo code PHNX. Bet just five dollars on any NFL team. Get two hundred dollars in free bets if they win their game. Uh, who do you like tomorrow? If you had to pick somebody's money line, probably the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I mean, if we're picking money lines, Minus the Bills. Um, who are the? Why am I blanking on who the Cardinals are playing? Oh, the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, Eagles money line. Mm. Sorry, nice. Uh, ASU was plus four ten on the DraftKings Sportsbook guy before this game. If you would have thrown, I don't know, let's say eighteen dollars, you would have won seventy three dollars and eighty cents plus your eighteen back, which is what I did. Oh, I was gonna say, I was like, how are you pulling that math out of nowhere? I was like, no, what the fuck? No. That'd be crazy. Um, yeah, so. It's the best place to do it. Uh, but just a reminder, age and eligibility restrictions apply. And see those show notes for more details. All right. Well, this game, not only did it make my heart rate go up, but it also just made me feel very happy. And it made me indulge in what the future of this team could be. Yeah. I left a good taste in my mouth. I did leave a good taste in my mouth. Sean, what does this game taste like? It tastes like a little Four Peaks Desert Day Drinker. Really? Come on. Like I said, it was a surprise. I didn't see it coming. I wasn't expe- I wasn't prepared for how good it was going to be. Um, and then it was pretty fucking good. And it honestly might be one of my favorites yet. It's my favorite game of the year. Trent Bourget, pleasant surprise. Um, it just it tasted good in my tummy. Nice. Uh, on this one tongue. tasted a little weird for me. Uh, it, I mean, obviously the outcome was fantastic, but also... It was stressful. Yeah. Uh, much like shotgunning or actually, no, beer bonging a four loco when mm, you're in college. I, now it mm. just, no. When you're in college, beer bonging a four loco, terrible going through it because it's making your heart palpitate. You're a little nervous. Everyone's watching and people are making fun of you because you're spilling all over yourself. And, you know, you might have, you might have rolled your ankle a little bit and there's some injury and yeah. you need a new shoe, maybe. Um, but every, a shoe. Yeah. It tastes like a shoey. Yeah. Um, but everything turned out okay. So and now you're do. drunk. Uh, but it's a good drunk, it's a happy drunk, and you're day drunk, which is usually a pretty good one. So Grilled Penix. Uh, uh, 
All right. <laughs> Let's not look at the comments anyway. <laughs> the Mariners are one out away from advancing, by the way. Just wanted to just wanted to throw that out. Yeah, there. That was big. David, time. what does this game taste like to you? A little Penix energy. What does it taste like to you? Just tell Delicious. me. Delicious. Delicious. Yeah. Delicious. All right. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um what was I gonna say? There was oh, I feel like just to get out of the way, I gotta acknowledge uh BJ Green missing three quarters. Yeah, in two weeks. Uh that was an unfortunate penalty. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, what was Homeboy doing kicking the ball at the end there? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he thought he could get away with it. I mean, there's not like there's thousands of people watching. Or <laughs> uh, running backs. Let's talk running backs. Let's yeah. talk ex-Valaday. Uh, 23 attempts, dun, 111 dun, yards, dun, 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 and a touchdown. Dun, 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 what did you see from him tonight that made him so special? Um, I mean, it's something that I think we go back to a lot with with – ASU running backs, but the patience. I mean, there was that one mm-hmm. run in the second half, the fourth quarter, I think, where you know the, the, he just got stuck to the line. He just kind of waited behind his blockers for a little bit, and then he he busted it through the hole. Like, I, I he's just that he's just so explosive and just patient at the same time. It's it, he's just very fun to watch. And then obviously you add in the one two punch of him and Daniel Gata, then it's just it's nice. Yeah, I'm hoping ASU can pull off some more victories so we can get some more Daniel and Gata locker room. Yeah, post games. Yeah, that yeah. was fun. If you're just joining us, go ahead and take a look at the first three minutes of the show. I wish um, we could have shown you what was happening before. We yeah, even got yeah. Daniel and Gata, just a great. Yeah, I, Gata was great. Um, only ran the ball four times, but you know, yeah, scored Teddy. four almost forty yards rushing. Um, but then receiving Xavier Valade four catches for twenty two yards and a touchdown, two all purpose touchdowns for Xavier Valade. Just yeah. really good to have those guys in the backfield. A lot of patient running. Um. Yeah, from a rushing perspective, it's about all you want to see from these guys, especially yeah. if the passing game is working. Yeah. And you can't have a good passing game without solid receivers. And, and it's – oh, I was going to say, it's nice to have them when you have a quarterback come in. Like, the yeah. first play of the game for Borgay was a touchdown from the team. Yeah. Like, it's nice to have a running game that you can rely on so much when you have a quarterback that wasn't – I mean, was ready but was not expecting to be in the situation. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, let's talk about the receivers, as I mentioned uh, – Obviously, Elijah Badger was the guy tonight with two touchdowns and 53 uh, yards on seven catches, not targeted nine times. I tweeted earlier, uh, Elijah Badger is ASU quarterback comfort food. Yeah. If you know, it's it's the safety valve. He's always going to be able to make a play on the ball if he's not open already. He was great tonight. But Geo Sanders Geo led the Sanders, way yeah. at the start of the game. I think he caught the first or his, I think he got four passes in the first half and only finished with five receptions, 54 yards. He was targeted six times. Uh, but that was about it from receivers. I mean, you know, you got a long catch from Brian Thompson, the 38 yarder. Um, Charles Hall had a, had a pass. Jalen Conyers caught a pass, but that's it. Yeah. Um, where is, is Messiah, Messiah Swinson? Swinson and where is Andre Johnson? And where, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is we haven't, I don't think seen anything from Andre Johnson to be like, we, we need him. Yeah. Messiah Swinson seems like I don't I I obviously am missing something, but I just don't understand why yeah. he is not a bigger part of this offense. But I mean, we can focus on the, the positives. Um, yeah, I mean, you had three receivers go for over fifty yards, which was nice. Um, obviously, Ryan Thompson was off a big, a big. Uh, <laughs> you good? The Mariners just made it. They won. Oh yeah! Congrats! Oh my goodness! What Congrats. a great day for me. Saul in the chat saying, "I tried to tell y'all Trenton Borgay was the answer." No, you didn't. Yeah, at Can no you point. Show did me you... the tape. No, no, no point. You, did you have say... you have said that Emery's not. Yeah, but you've never been. Trenton Borgay is the answer. I also, I'm, I'm also just so not out on Emery Jones. I, I think, yeah, I, mean, I think you know, you get this really good performance from Trenton. Maybe you don't win the game, and 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 Trenton is that extra oomph. Yeah, but also. Maybe you win by a lot more. Yeah, like, I mean, sure every jump was seven up, for nine. Like, yeah. He wasn't playing bad. Sure, it might have fired up this team, and sure, we saw some things from Trent that we didn't see. When? So I'll just, just send, send me the tape. But I don't think that you can say that Emery was bad tonight. No, him. I mean, he objectively was not. Seven for nine. Obviously, small sample size. Seven for nine, 59 yards, 132.8 uh, quarterback rating. Like, I mean, they this offense clearly... Figured it out, and I'm, that's the that's the really thing, right? Like we've been asking for it every single, like all year, is just for the offense to figure it out. And like it, it, we were talking about it every week, I wanted to see kind of like a a progression where it's like first game against Utah, 
I wanted to see them throw the ball more. They did a little bit too much. So second game, I wanted to see them find a better So let's enjoy this. All right, go on. <laughs> um, Don't bring up EMU ever again, please. It makes me sad. Um, second game, I wanted to see that. Yeah, I want to see them find more of a balance. Yeah. They did that, but then they didn't make any second half adjustments. Third game, I wanted to see them make second half adjustments. And I don't know if they really necessarily did, but they kept it going. Like, they, they didn't go stale in the second half. And I was a little concerned because the first drive was a third and out, and it was reminiscent of the USC game. And I was like, oh, God, here we go again. Um, but it all worked out. And now I feel really good about Iguano. And this, and I'm sure we'll talk about this later in the week, but huge for the Iguano resume. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you weren't able to go to the game tonight, you could have very easily. There were a lot of seats available. But if you're going to do that again and wait till the last minute, use the Game Time app. Um, Sean, you know have a lot of experience with the Game Time app, don't you? Yes, I do. Um, you probably could have gotten a ticket for what three dollars, five dollars. I don't know. I didn't see. I didn't. I forgot to check before the game. Um, but I use it a lot for baseball. It'll be come in handy when Merrill Kelly is pitching for Team USA in the World Baseball Classic. I cannot wait for that. Um, and, you know, I'm the kind of person who's just like, I got a lot going on. Vibes. I got a lot going on. I kind of just have to vibe with it. So, last second, some I got some time. Buy a ticket on the game time app. Yeah. That's the vibe. Uh, save up to 60% on tickets when you buy tickets last minute. It's great for everybody that is. You want to go to the Suns game? Out there. The preseason game? Yeah. You want to know how much you can get a ticket for? Seven dollars. One dollar. Oh my god. Literally a dollar. Amazing. There were twenty thousand people out there first preseason game. That's I crazy. Say. Um best way to support us is by buying the tickets or your tickets through the link in the description. So check the show notes. Um and yeah, do it. It's 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 the best place to get tickets last minute. Um, all right. I want to mention what Jet said in the chat. If we go seven and five, is Iguano the full time guy? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, they've they've played their hardest opponents. You win six straight, or what do you go six, five and five and one, six and one. After losing to Utah and USC, five mm-hmm. and one, seven and five. They they're two and. Yes, the answer is yes. If they, I mean, if, yeah, if they're anywhere near that, then yeah. yeah. If they, what? How many losses do they have? Four. They're two and four right now. So if you only lose one more game for the rest of the year, yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like you have to. I mean, it depends on what that loss is. If you lose to Colorado, then and. Mm. Uh, it makes it a, a trickier situation, but yeah, I mean, this is a huge win for the Iguano resume. Like, I, I think it shows that the players have bought in. Um, I mean, you just saw how happy Engada was, and he talked about just how mm. the emotion that guys had just for getting Iguano was first win. Like, it, yeah, absolutely. This is what you wanted to see from an interim, and you're yeah, getting it. They played for him tonight, yeah. for sure. You, you, you could tell the sideline was jumping. Um, and also, I, I mean, like I've I've heard it from people around the office to, to random things like it's a high school coach. He showed today that he can coach, like he's capable of coaching. He had a backup quarterback and he beat a ranked team, be a top twenty five team. Like you don't do that on accident. Yeah, so. yeah. But taking nothing away from Trenton, he was great. Obviously, yeah, I mean, yeah. a lot of people want to have this conversation in the chat, so I'll bring up the poll we posted. It's ninety three three percent say Trenton Borgay should be the starter. Um, that's another again. That's a conversation to have later. We're talk about I, I, I don't hate. I don't hate either option. It just whatever makes this team win is all that matters. I'm not on either side. Um, Washington Frodsky's absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I will say Bourget is good enough to where you don't need to rush Emery back. Like wait until yeah. he's 100 percent healthy at the very least. Absolutely. Um, nice to know. And also, Jess, Paul Tyson, how you doing? Stop! I it. just got. I just. I just want to know how. I, I just want to know. I. I just want to know how he's doing. Why are we doing this? I just want to so know. Make, I'm just making sure he's okay. I just want to know how he's doing. Sean, I'm just saying. Transfer all the way. You went from being. Uh, oh, Sean! Sean, not Sean. I'm just saying he was a backup at Alabama, mean. and now he's a third string so quarterback mean. at ASU. Um, before we get to the bad stuff, we'll get into a fun segment. Um, it's time for the lyric of the game. This lyric of the game comes from a song by the Front Bottoms. It's called Funny You Should Ask. Um, it's actually the opening line about, of the song. It says, the good thing about this cast is that I can still hold a knife. And yeah. then it goes like, yeah, whatever. But, you know, I, I explained this to you. Um, the the lyric may be confusing to you guys, but, you know, they they took a punch. They took a pretty big punch, and they, you know, were injured at quarterback. But Trent Borgay is the knife that this team was wielding all yeah. day. And that's the storyline of this game. How can it not be? I mean... He was just so poised, so fantastic. Such a great story to see him get a shot and come in and beat a top 25 team. Um, 
just uh, you can't really say enough about Trent Borgay today. Yeah, he was uh, just a very pleasant surprise. Like it was because uh, I mean we had always joked about him and everything, and but uh, there was always a thing that like if if something were to happen with Emery, Borgay is the guy that we have a little more confidence back there. Um, the chance calling him poor man Stenson Bennett. Hey, no. Stenson Bennett's a national champion. A poor man Stenson Bennett is a bull winner, and I'll take it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is what we had talked about all year: is that Borgay was. We trusted him a little bit more than Paul Tyson. Should there need to, a backup need to come in? Mm. He proved, at least me, right. I've always been on the, the Borgay backup. I, I needed another Whoa, B. And I Borgay think, backup brigade. Boat, boat. Oh. Sure. That works, too. Yeah. Uh, All aboard. Choo-choo. Wait. Oh. 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 You comfortable right now? Not comfortable. I mean, how can I not be? Yeah. Look at what These we're chairs. sitting in. What we're sitting in. Where did we get them? More furniture. More furniture. Duh. 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 They Duh. outfitted the entire office, and it looks fantastic. We were watching the second half from our recliners up in the, the lounge area. Um, there's nothing better than drinking some Four Peaks and sitting in some chairs that are very comfortable. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I, – what, what else is better? Can you name something? Well, yes. Drinking some Four Peaks, sitting in some ca- chairs that are comfortable after watching ASU wow. beat number 21 ranked. Is this University the best my life is going to get? Oh, no. It might be, but – you know and the Mariners just want. Oh no! Oh no! This is it! This is it, guys. Anyway, go get some more <laughs> furniture. Uh, Sean, you're moving into a new place. I am uh, soon, so you can spruce your home up during more furniture's fall sale at morefurniture.com. Plus, you'll receive a hundred dollar gift card for every thousand dollars you spend. What are you looking for? Looking for anything spicy? Um, everything. Uh, I need a couch. I need a bed. I need some tables. I need some side tables. I need an entertainment station. Ham, thing. Ham, spam, potatoes, need, tomatoes. Yeah. Ham. I need a dresser. I need literally every single piece of furniture possible because I've never lived in a non-furnished place before. Um, and I'm going to get a lot more furniture because, duh. Yeah, definitely. I'm just reading Jacob's comment saying, just want to mention how watching Iguanos talk to our guys about how important this win is to him almost brings me to tears. So happy for him. Yeah, Iguano is such a fun coach to root for. He, there's no way you can't. Um, I just, I, I'm just so excited. But we got to do some bad things on the show sometimes. We got to talk about the bad things. Oh, uh, this defense is really bad. Yeah, at I mean, there's definitely parts of it that are bad for sure. Yeah. Um, as a collective, it's bad. Yeah, I mean, I just you said it at one point during near the end of the game. Um, I'm just worried about kind of the the approach from Donnie. And I mean, they started they started pressuring near the end of the game, and it seemed like it was being effective. Mm-hmm. Like they were sending people. Um, I don't think it's terrible, right? The red zone defense is good. I feel like you have a couple guys, Corey Bethley, you know, uh, Jordan Clark, I think was, was terrific today. But then you have guys like Ro Torrance who was not as great. And obviously there's depth problems with the he secondary got so many times. <laughs> yeah. And you're still missing Omar Norman lot and Nesta got hurt at one point, but he came back in, but talk about fucking athlete Nesta Jade Silvera. But it's yeah, just, oh I just don't feel like they're really being put, being put in a position to succeed. I don't know. It's too much of the, the it's the, the really soft bad. zone thing. Um, and it, it's, they, it, it seems like they really are playing with a bend, don't break mentality because the defense also just doesn't make sense sometimes. Like, yeah, I was baffled at the end of the game yeah. on the last drive. They sent three and they sacked Penix for the first time in the game. And it wasn't a coverage sack. They got home fast. Yeah. With it, three rushers. It's tough because. On one hand, like like I said, I don't think they're really put in a position to succeed by Donnie. But on the other hand, when you look at like their penalties and stuff, it doesn't seem like they're very good decision makers. And so it's a lot easier, I feel like, to get away with bad decision makers yeah. when it's just the plays in front of you go make a tackle. I think now. Donnie's still got a little bit of Herm in him. Yeah. Like like because last year this defense was amazing. You know, it was, yeah. it was the second ranked defense in the pack pack twelve. And they did it with a bend don't break. You know, they played yeah. these soft zones. Yeah. Sure. But it was, you it's know, you had talent. Defense, you had yeah. a rare, two yeah, very depth, talented yeah. corners. You had, you know, more depth at linebacker. You yeah. had better rushers. Yeah. You can't get away with it. You have to scheme some stuff up. And I think they did a good job a couple times. You know, they on the on the fourth down, late in the fourth quarter, that got ASU the ball back that should have cemented the game. They ran cover zero, and they yeah. blitzed, and Penix threw a terrible ball because he was pressured. Yeah, and, I mean, we almost saw Merlin get a sack at one point. Yeah. Like, it was – yeah, the, it's nice to see pressure. You just didn't see a whole lot of it. Um, and yeah, it's just tough because the defense is a situation where it's like they're in a bend, don't break mentality uh, or set up kind of, and then they make stupid mistakes with like the penalties and stuff like that. 
There's a, a, a few pass interference calls, some of which were eh, whatever, but you put you put yourself in a position where those those had to be called. Um, and then personal fouls, different things. Like, yeah, it's it's tough. I like I said, they did enough tonight, and I guess the red zone defense was very good. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have a couple guys that can make plays, but. I need to see a little more. Yeah, the budget wasn't big enough to give two players of the game away, two bottle services away, because, you know, Ace of Spades are pretty yeah. expensive. So, you know, or the Four Peaks, you know, thing they got going on, the giant sparklers, they got that, yeah. right? Yeah. They got I mean, cars I, and stuff. I don't know Peaks. that they don't. <laughs> uh, but if we were to give one away from the defense, I know who mine is. I'm sure it's the same as you. It's Jordan Clark. Y- yeah. Pick yeah. six, nine tackles tonight. All solo. Yeah, and just – an incredible performance yeah. of ball seeking. Like yeah, yeah. he just recognizes plays so well, so much better than the average defender. And yeah. he he just flies around the field. What'd you see him from him tonight that made him so special? Yeah, I mean it was just I think he's a great tackler. Like he he made good tackles. Obviously, he was just kind of in the right place at the right time with the pick. It's not necessarily like he did anything crazy there, but he he was he put himself in a position to almost make another pick later in the game where he undercut our receiver's route, and then it ended up almost being an incredible catch, neither of which happened, but that's neither here nor there. Um, he's just kind of in the right place at the right time, and you could see the emotion he plays with, and I feel like the rest of the secondary feeds off of it. When he makes big plays, like you you notice him. He gets hype, mm-hmm. and I like to see that from, this, from somebody on this defense because if it's not coming from him, I don't know who else it comes from on the defense. Yeah, it still just feels like this team needs a little bit of juice. Yeah. Uh, like just to get going. They obviously started slow again. Down ten three, was it? Yeah, ten yeah, three before yeah. they started to turn it around, um, and I don't know. It's just it, it it regardless of the injury or not, I think it would have happened. It's just how this team did plays. They just they have sluggish starts. They're, and and when something good happens, when some juice comes, that's when they start to play. Like after the Jordan Clark interception, yeah, they're up fourteen points, but then they went allowed a touchdown right back. But then their offense looked good the rest of the game. Like yeah. they just need this juice to continue to to pressure the opponents and to, and to keep themselves in the game. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's mental or it's just how this team functions, but it just seems like they need that big play. Yeah. That's just such a weird game today. Kyle Soli uh, is another guy on this defense that I thought played fantastic. He yeah. had that uh, breakup that almost led to a pick yeah, in the yeah, end zone, yeah. uh, led the team in tackles with 12 total, five being solo. Uh, but he's a guy that you don't really – see until you see the stat sheet yeah you know you yeah, see him moving around the field and you see deadly. him always mixing it up but a lot like nesta you don't really see unless he's making a play um which oh my god nesta <laughs> he you know, he had the near horse collar which in and of itself was a spectacular play because he had the guy by the by the collar and then, and then he just reached his arm yeah. around and brought him in so it wasn't a horse collar which only happened because he chased somebody down like ten yards down the field he on the sideline. He caught up to somebody. That's it all was, you need to say. It was unbelievable. It, it was it was a terrific play. And speaking of catching up, um, Anthony tells you in the green room right now, getting set up. Uh, but before we get to him, I do just want to remind you guys about Burrito Express and what they have right now. Tomorrow, four dollar burritos. <laughs> Burritos. Why do they have four dollar burritos tomorrow, Sean? Um, I don't know. Oh, forget. Mm. Oh, just it- kidding. I know it's because Daniel mother effing and got a gun in the motherfucking end zone. I I love how I said mother effing and censored then censored yourself and then. But yeah, I got too excited. I'm sorry. Um, Anytime Daniel got a scores this year and gets in the end zone, four dollar burritos at Burrito Express. Um, the day after, so tomorrow go. Get some burritos at Burrito Express. Get the breakfast supreme. Get whatever you like. Get some lunch. Get some dinner. Get some breakfast. All at the same time. Uh, that's what we did. Before they closed at 3 p.m., we got our breakfast and we got our uh, or we got our lunch and we got our dinner for last night's or last week's game. Yes. Um, it's just the best way to go. So make sure you go ahead and get your burritos from Burrito Express. Um, as I believe Toe Tree is ready. I think he's having some internet issues in the tunnel. Um, oh, one Mr. Anthony Toe Tree. Sean, anything else about this game that stood out to you? What made this game so special? I mean, it... I don't know. It just <laughs> was like... It was one of those things where like... I feel drunk. Yeah, it was... Because it, it just felt different. Like, I feel like any other... If Herm was still the coach... Mm. And there was plenty of situations where it was like, ah, no. Yeah. Like, oh, boy, this is where it gets bad. Like, for example, the fact that they went three and out on the first drive of the second half. I was like, 
<laughs> I was like, what? I was like, is this like is this where it goes wrong? Again? Yeah. And it just didn't. Every they just they just kept they kept fighting punching back. back, and it was really really good to see. I think that this team, like if they play like they did today, can hang with just about anybody in the conference. Um, because I mean they did with USC for a half, and if they had played like that for two halves, that USC game looked different. If this offense is is more productive like they were today, they hang with a Utah team. Should we do a little? So we I don't want to mention the Pac-12. Yeah, we will go around and watch look at the scores. So Sean, you obviously made a bet with Toe Tree. I did make a bet with Toe Tree. Um it is more than likely I'm more than likely going to lose it. And what um, do you have to do? I have to drink a beer out of a shoe, aka do a shoey. Um Yeah. So the bet was that US Oh, oh, hold on now. Hold yeah, on now. You got too much dip on your chip, Toe Tree. Um the bet was that you that Utah would beat UCLA by more than USC would beat Washington State. Um, if you haven't noticed, USC um, or UCLA. Utah lost to UCLA by ten points, so that's not looking great. But currently, Washington State is beating number six ranked USC fourteen ten, which would be a death now to the conference. Um, yeah. But I might not have to drink a beer out of a shoe. So I, I feel like drinking a beer out of a shoe right now. Honestly, um, yeah. The, the other games will be kicking off tonight. Obviously, Oregon at U of A is going to be a good one, 6 p.m. And then 8 p.m., Oregon State at Stanford. Oof. I, fine. UCLA is good. I said it. They are. Yeah. They're not frauds. Washington State might be the best team in the conference, though. I know I said that about yeah. two other teams already this yeah. year. but Well, let's bring uh, in the man himself. I think he's ready now. Hello. Okay, we're ready now, but we're not on the field. We're in the press box. That's totally fine, Toe Trio. Damn, you got up there fast. Yeah. I was sprinting, man. I was sprinting. That's that's a commitment. I respect it. Tosri, hundred percent. What in the world did we watch? Just what? Are, what is? What are your immediate reactions <laughs> from this game? I, I have no idea, to be honest with you. I don't think anybody that was outside of this locker room expected Trenton Borgay to go in there and to do what he did. I don't think. Um, Really, anybody out of Tempe in Tucson would have been able to tell you even who Trent Borgay was. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for him to come in here, broadcast. <laughs> for him to come in here, for him to come in here, um, and really, he was moving the offense better than Emery was when he was in the game. Uh, this is, I know we talked last week about how the offense looked improved, the team looked improved, uh, but this was the best the offense has looked mm-hmm. by yeah. far. They were, I think there was one point in the game where they had three first downs on three consecutive plays. I don't remember the last time that's ever happened covering Arizona State. Um, And he took the hits that he knew he was going to take in certain situations. um, And it it won them Sean Aguano's very first game as an interim coach. And he's now got his selling point. He's now got the the first chip has fallen. Um, And now I think, you know, that – they can move on from the moral victories that they had from USC or whatever. Now it's like, okay, everything that Iguano has been telling us for the last two and a half, three weeks. Oh shit. That actually, it actually works now. Like we beat a top 25 team at home against one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. Like they might be onto something now. Yeah. Uh, you're looking ahead after the bye week at Stanford and Colorado. And then all of a sudden you got a three game winning streak. If you take care of yeah. business yeah. going in, uh, go, playing UCLA at home. Obviously, UCLA looking good today. Uh, but Charles in the chat saying this was Pac-12 after dark, but for lunch. I totally yeah. agree. Totri, you just came from the uh, pressers. Who? What players did you hear from? So we heard from Borgay. We heard from Badger. We heard from Nesta. We heard from Kyle Soley, um, Ben Scott, Isaiah Johnson. They gave us literally anybody and everybody. And then Aguano just finished speaking. So I left after him and Jordan Clark and Xavier Valade were just getting ready to go. So literally everybody – um, it, it was everybody with the same kind of mentality, man. Everybody was super excited uh, to get out there. Nesta, I think with the, the quote of the day, he was asked how he's going to celebrate. And immediately he said he was going to be at the crib studying um, the game film, calling coaches. And then as soon as he left, he was hype, hype as shit, man. Like, I, like in total Nesta fashion, yeah. like you could hear him screaming in the hallway. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say studying for like class or something. I was like, nah, respect. Nah. He was well. They asked him. They asked him. They asked him. They're like, how do you, 
how do you feel if you could describe it in one word? He's like, lit. I'm lit. <laughs> and then er- everybody was laughing. And then so Kyle Sully was right next to him. And they're like, Kyle, how do you feel? He's like, I guess I'm lit too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. Well, what are some things that Borgay said? Because obviously he's normally not the one that's going to be talking. Yeah. There had been talking yeah. after a, a, a post game. What did he have to say? Yeah, so and you kind of get got this from talking to him when the quarterback competition was still a thing. But this is a guy that's been here um, in every single week. He preps as if he is the starter. Um, something that I think stood out to me was not necessarily what he said, because he gave you total coach speak the entire time, you know. Uh, but the other players alluding to just how well Borgay knows the offense, mm-hmm, yeah. saying that he knows it better than some of the coaches. Um, so for them to say that, for I feel like everybody to have the confidence in a guy that even Iguano said, you know, he, he doesn't have the, the best arm. He's not the fastest. He's not the biggest. But they trusted him. And I, after today, I don't think – I don't think you can't not trust this guy moving forward. Like, Aguano was asked point blank, do we have a quarterback competition? And he said, we're going to have a battle everywhere, like as a coach would say, but pretty much we're, we're in the midst now of a quarterback competition at Arizona State between Trent Borgay and Emory Jones. It's week seven. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, though, that is one thing that I, I hadn't really thought about. I guess I kind of did, but I didn't bring up, like, when you have a backup quarterback come in, like it's very easy to try and get like kind of conservative or whatever. And I don't feel like they did that at all. Like it was clear that no. they that everyone had a lot of trust in Borgay to just keep running the same offense that they were running. But, and I think that's why they were so but effective. But Borgay is so different because he's not just a backup quarterback at a school. He's a yeah. guy that sat for four years, you know, a redshirt yeah. junior that sat and watched this offense as much as it may have changed or not then seen it for four years and not transferred out. Like he is unique. Yeah. And that, and and, and as Daniel said, I'm sure as all the players said, like it wasn't a surprise to them. They knew this was going to yeah. happen. This is Borgay. It's, just, it's yeah. so awesome. Which is, which is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. If we would have gone in the game, maybe with the mentality of like, you know what? We have a Borgay at our office and he kills what he does. Like, damn, we should have expected this from Trenton. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, come on now. We can't, we can't flatter Gerald. Uh, he's been flattered <laughs> too much. Uh, last question for me and Toad Tree before yeah. we let you go. Did anybody ask the question that I want to ask um, about any of the defensive players? Why is our, the, the defense so bad? Did anybody just ask that? Like straight up? Yeah, just why is it so bad? Bro Torrance, are nah, you good? No. Nah. Nobody asked. But I'll tell you what. Isaiah Johnson is a guy that is going to be a special, special player. Oh, that's um, a surprise. Yeah. And between him and Nesta, Nesta said the way he spoke about Aguano afterwards and i tweeted the clip from the sun devils account so if you haven't seen it go check it out i have never heard a player talk about a coach like that um nesta said straight up look i've been in college for five years and it's just different this guy's different like you want to play for him um isaiah johnson coming in like he feels like in the three weeks that aguano has been the lead guy that he's elevated as a football player like, these are things that were not said while Herm was the coach, right? So there's clearly a difference in mentality. There's a difference in what they're doing in practice. And it's it's ultimately translated to them getting their second win of the season against a top 25 team. But no, to answer to answer your question in a long way, nobody asked why the defense was so bad. All right, I'm going to do the post game next time. I'll go ahead and go down hey, there. Hey, you know what? Die! If you want to – Hey, if Donnie, you, if you, what's happening? Okay. If you if you have the cojones to after a win to ask why the defense was so bad, props to you. <laughs> um, I have one last question for you, Totri. Um, Sly asked yeah. in the chat, what's the earliest acceptable time to mow a lawn? Acceptable time, like in the like during the day. Well, it depends. It depends on the day. If it's a weekday. Or no, weekday. I don't. I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Um, I think nine a.m. Not between eight and nine is a an acceptable time to begin that time. I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good, that's yeah. good time. Yeah. Why would you guys before, say? No, definitely no, nothing uh, before nine. Yeah, I no, think that's no, a good before nine. nine. Um, also, if you're mowing the lawn on the weekend, on a weekday, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, don't you get out of work? Yeah. What are we doing? There? Not Maybe necessarily. That's job, Maybe that's true. Yeah, what if they're a professional landscaper? Yeah, well, then 
then they get to do it whenever they want. I guess they would start at nine two. Oh, it's a nine to five. Now? They get to do it. They get to mow lawn. Well, no, they I'm get you, to mow I'm the saying lawn. you, as the general populace, got to deal with it whenever they decide to mow your lawn. Speaking of do mowing it. lawn, shout out the grounds crew. Yo, that field was that field yeah. was incredible. Fire. After seeing the jerseys in action, how are your have your opinions changed at all? On the jerseys, I yeah. mean, shit. I'm at this point. I'm like, you wear those until you lose. Every week, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Everything needs to be the exact same yeah. as it was today. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I said including <laughs> including Trent and Borgay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I I said that the jerseys, you know, the yellow and weird combination didn't look good. This combination looked great. It looked amazing. Yeah. Before the game. Also, started. what are we what are we doing? I'm 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 watching the the USC games now. What are we doing? Why are they down yeah, for? Yeah. Hey, it? brother. I don't know. What are we doing right we now? We might both lose this bet. I, I'm not sure. What's happening here? So I need I need Washington to either USC needs to win, or they just can't lose by ten or more. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. They're they're fourteen ten with U- West or Washington State driving right now. So yeah, we'll not great. Cameron not Ward. great for the shoe. Stop it right now. Just saying. Told you anything else before we let you go? Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Um, anybody that didn't come out to the game, you missed a hell of a game. That's, That's even facts. more incentive to get back here. Look, their next home game is until, I believe, November 5th against Stanford. And then after that, they only got one more. And it's going to be – or no, November 5th against UCLA uh, back here. That's obviously going to be a good game because UCLA is going to be still ranked at that point, or they should be. Um, and then the game – the next State. home game after that is Oregon State. So, look, you get two more chances Ooh, to teams. come out here. Like, the environment for, for the crowd that was here was pretty electric and – I don't know how many times we got to say it, but like you might as well come out and support this team. It's exciting. Sean Aguano has got everybody buying in. Um, and it's getting nice out. Get up or get run over. Hey, hashtag why not us? Why not hashtag us? Why not us? Anthony Totri, everybody. Follow him on Twitter at Anthony underscore Totri. Totri, you have a great rest of your Saturday. Peace, boys. Later. This is. Oh, okay. Final thoughts on this game, Sean. Uh, Looking forward to the bye week. Um, what or just looking ahead to the bye week, what does this team need to do to get right, get ready for a stamp? Um I am have been going back and forth since this game ended on whether or not the bye week is a good thing to have right now. Because on one hand it's the it's the momentum killer, but on the other hand, it's like they get a, t- a chance to come back to earth. Yeah. Um so hopefully and Iguano seems like the kind of guy that would do this, but like hopefully with this time he can just kind of get their mind off of the win. They can focus on what they've done done right, but don't let them get too high off the fact that they just beat a ranked team. Like they still have work to do because Stanford's not a good team. It's got even for by ASU standards, it's not a good team. Got trap game written all over it. That's not a game you can lose. No. Um, so just get their mind right and get them keep them focused. I think that line probably opens up as even. <laughs> really? At, In at Stanford? oh, at Stanford. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. After a win over Washington, if you were a odds maker, what would you make the odds right now? Um, like ASU plus five and a half, yeah. minus five and a half. Oh, you have them favored at I have, the road. Yeah, interesting. I, I mean, I think they're about Stanford's not good. Yeah, they're not good, but <laughs> and ASU ASU's a good team, man. I know they they're are. They're a good team. They I don't have a great defense, but Stanford doesn't have are. a high powered offense. Uh, I know. Like it'd be one thing if they were playing like uh, Arizona, for example, like a team that has a good quarterback and a, one or two good weapons on offense. But like, this is not a team that has anything spectacular on offense. Yeah. Um, so it's the team, this is the team they should go beat. So yeah, but to answer your original question on the bye week, just get back to work, get focused, kind of put this behind you. Um, and you're ready for Stanford. Yeah. Biggest takeaway from this game for me is I think this team is totally bought in. Yeah. And they're that's good man. They're a good team. Well, they're yeah. a good offense and a, a serviceable defense. Their defense can and a get great right. kicker, baby Vinatieri from 53 yeah. yards deep. One thing about, him in the game. One, there's two things about Carter Brown. One, he's clutch. He is. And two, he will always like my tweets after the game ends. I was honestly right the there's ends. a part of me hoping hoping that or that Washington was going to score so we could get a Carter Brown game winner field goal. No, there was a small part of me. I obviously just wanted them to win, but I would have I would have really liked yeah. it if that's how they won. I need a game winning field goal from Carter Brown at some point. Yeah, I think maybe we'll, Terry. Hopefully, we'll get it, and it's not against Stanford or Colorado, so those games aren't close. Yeah, ASU wins. Gets a second win on the season. First in the Sean at Guano era, 45 to 38 at home, knocking off number 21, Washington. Guys, we're live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right here on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. And we're live after every single ASU football post game and soon to be hockey and basketball. Yeah. We'll be in the trenches here soon. So make sure to follow PHNX underscore Sun Devils across or on Twitter and follow PHNX underscore sports across all socials Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. 
Um, and yeah, hopefully this team can keep the momentum going and we have some more fun post game shows and we're meeting on mill yeah. more often, but until then enjoy your guys Saturday. You can follow me on Twitter at chain deep. Follow Sean on Twitter at Sean underscore to pause. Follow Sean on Twitter at PHNX underscore sun devils and toe tree. You can follow him at PHNX underscore. What are we doing? Here? Oh yeah. Sorry. Well, I didn't do, I didn't do you last. Yeah, I know. And you can follow Sean to pause at Sean underscore to pause. Just body in as always. Just on the iguano hype train as always. And we'll see you guys on Monday. Peace.